Welcome back, everybody. We're back and we're talking about the latest edition of Loki. So about a week ago, maybe, I released the Loki fastest face swap with batch modes. And that was mostly for doing little animations, GIFs, doing a bit of face swapping. But it also gave us the ability to save and create face models, right? And then you could load them in using my Trio T-Pose workflow. So that meant that we were always getting the faces that we created in the images. And then we have a bunch of images, right? And what we were doing is we were using Hedra to animate them. So if I just quickly take a look at this was the Loki workflow. And if we zoom in and we just say, I want to create a face model, just take this one off. And then there we have it. And these are the three faces. Obviously, you can add more. You can even add more inputs. But I'm pretty sure you can just add more. I think if I just drag another image in, it's going to just create a new one, actually. Um, and then we give it a name and we run it. And that creates our reactor face model. Okay. And we created a bunch of those in that other video. Um, and there was a whole article about it and a whole, <laughs> a whole workflow, like I say. And so this, this workflow has not changed. It's the same, all right? But what we've done, and I've included a Hedra video for you guys so that you can just mess around with this out the box. So you don't need to actually, you can record your own video, but we'll get to that. So here is the live portrait KJ. If you drop my workflow, um, if you drop the workflow in, so here is the pack. And as you can see, we've got the face swap and inside it, we've got live portrait. Inside that, we've got the live portrait JSON, the input video and the T-pose image. If you want to just, you know, if you want to drag these two straight in, you can just immediately use it. Okay. So you drag that one into Comfy. It's going to ask to update and it's going to install. Uh, it's going to install live portrait. Now I have made slight changes but only in fixing the frame rate because in order to have this installed, you have to have the nodes which you need to fix the frame rate. So when you install this, you'll already get nodes which will take the frame rate from the source video, sorry, and then also the audio, which means that when you have a person speaking, it's going to take that frame rate and match it to whatever animation is created for the input image. Okay. So once you've updated your comfy, you will need some extra models. The links in the description and in the workflow. And as you can see here, there are six of them and they're all really tiny, which is nice. The biggest one is 222 meg. The rest are under 200, under 200 meg. So you chuck them all in the indicated area. And I have done a little write up on this for you. So as you can see, this is where the images go into models, live portrait, just like that. Okay. So once you've got your live portrait models in place, you will see this. Let's go full screen. So this is the uh, live portrait workflow. And what I've done is I've updated it. So I have added this bit. And then I've just kind of moved everything around a little bit. That's all. But I added this bit because when I do video stuff, it's annoying to have to sync. It's an additional step to have to sync, sync the audio back in. Now, you know, it's not a big deal, but you can just have stuff working, right? So this is using video from Comfy UI Helper Suite, uh, the video loader. So we've used that. I've showed that off in other videos and we use it in Loki. So we take the video info, drag that into the video info node, and then we take the source FPS and use that to drive the frame rate. And then that will happily fix. And then obviously we drag the audio out and in. So those two things, so I've connected that to there and then that to there. You have to enable this as a variable and then it will be fine. And then I've just dragged the audio across. And what that means is that whatever video of a talking head, you can use your webcam, you can use 
a mobile phone, you can use video camera, you can use Hedra, as we have here with text-to-speech. So this is a text-to-speech video from a, from a cropped JPEG of a head look, okay, in Hedra. These are all things that we've covered in the deep dives. And uh, what this is actually going to do is then take one of the T-poses, as I say, using the face model in Trio T-pose. We've used control net to make a T-pose. And what we were doing is we were then cutting these out and turning them into 2D puppets, which we can then animate using a webcam live. But to make it even better, we actually have a, a removable head and underneath is a tracking stick. So the problem we had was that the faces were not the same resolution as the bodies. So we were ending up with really high detailed heads and shrunk down, it doesn't match. Now. What this does, and I will run it now so that we can see what the speed is. This is going to be a cold start. I haven't even run any generations since I uh, opened this instance up. As you can see, it's like a freshly loaded comfy. All right. And now we will see it do its business. So I'm just going to keep talking. So. Here is the video driver. Live Portrait is going to do all the heavy lifting with those six clever models it has. There are various options here, so we can disable the eye targeting and stuff as far as I can see, but I don't know why you would. Uh, this, These settings that it comes with are good. I messed around with it a bit, but I'll be honest, these are these settings are fine. I mean, I, I can imagine in certain situations you'd want to, like, you know, use something different, but... These, these settings are fine. Um, right, and so right now it's just chugging away. Let's have a look at the output. There we go. It's done. It's already done a whole bunch of stuff. Now it's doing face analysis. Okay. And ultimately what we'll have is the clip that's shown in the gallery on the V12. So this is the video, and as you can see, it's bobbing about and talking quite happily. Um, this is actually faster, more controllable. Um, uh, doing it, I think it's a bit more accurate with um, using like a, a, photo, a, a video of yourself, but you have to get good lighting and you have to get the angle just right. Um, it does allow you to move your head quite a bit. So you can put in quite a bit of uh, a characterization and emotional sort of traits. You can sort of do these sort of personality stuff, which is cool. Um, be interesting to see what it looks like when we get the puppet moving around, but it all goes towards making this a more refined thing. So obviously this is going to be the approach I'll use in Deep Dive Part 3, where we'll try to do, we're trying to do more with Comfy wherever we can. And obviously if we can do this talking head section, entirely using our own speech you can transform your speech later you know you can take the audio track out and transform that with your speech model we've already talked about that in other videos um, and we'll touch on them more in part three as well but essentially uh this is pretty much the long and short of it if i go back now it's done i've been jabbering too long it's took probably took ages let's see it took 153 seconds okay 153 seconds and if you watch this it's quite a lengthy video he says quite a lot of stuff um and as you can see there it is now one thing i did notice is that the face tends to liquefy quite a bit in a few points you'll see it almost distorts a bit and you can uh solve that with uh d-warp de uh stabilizers and things like that so it's not actually the end of the world um, if you're getting too much, because it's, it's like too much depth, I guess. There's too much depth in when he moves his head and stuff. But this is really good. It's way better than the last one. Um, and because it matches better, it's easier to now isolate rotoscope, turn this into a floating head, which we can use disposably, throw back on here. Um, I would say that to sort of keep the generation cost down, 
when you get really good generations and you've isolated them and now they're tracked, consider overdubbing because often you can talk in a specific way and it might actually almost match what they're saying. Anyway, I wasn't trying to match what he was saying there. I'm just saying <laughs> you it's possible to do stuff with dubbing. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to lip sync every single scene. Certainly a background character, you just need a bit of movement. So you could use a stock, you know, stock animated head that is talking when it's not fully focused on that character, for example. Right. Anyway, so if you want to get the uh, if you want to get the workflow, it is over on the Civit AI. There's a link in the description. Um, I've told you everything about the live portraits. So thank you very much to the people writing these nodes, because without it, we can't put this stuff together. Uh, thanks to everybody watching and following the uh, sort of <laughs> meandering as we try to like put things together now into something that could actually be presentable. Um, and remember. What would Sir Humphrey Davy do? And on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.